Senegal is the latest African country to be hit by the world's worst Ebola outbreak. Its first case is a student from Guinea who arrived in the capital Dakar carrying the virus. A student from Guinea came to the hospital infected, without hemorrhaging, but hiding that he'd been in contact in Guinea with victims of the disease. The person was quickly put in quarantine and given appropriate care. He then was tested positive for Ebola. At this time, the patient is in a stable condition. So Senegal is now the fifth West African country to confirm an Ebola patient. Latest figures from the World Health Organization show that 430 deaths in Senegal's southern neighbor Guinea. Liberia has recorded the greatest number of deaths at 694. In Sierra Leone, 422 people have died from the virus. And in Nigeria, there have been six deaths so far. Well, Sierra Leone's health minister has been sacked over her handling of the Ebola e epidemic. A presidential statement said Miata Kargbo was removed to, quote, create a conducive environment for the efficient and effective handling of the outbreak. Tarek Basley has more details. A welcome addition in the fight against Ebola, a new temporary laboratory in Sierra Leone's capital, Freetown. One of just two other labs in the country equipped to test for Ebola was closed this week after a member of staff caught the virus. The new facility's only been open a few days, but already it's in high demand. In the past, if you would like to test uh, Ebola, you would have to send the specimens overseas. The test results will be issued uh, only after a few days, or sometimes even after a week, if not even longer. Here we can issue the results uh, since um, you know, when we receive the specimens, uh, we um, can issue the results within uh, three to five hours. In Guinea, UN agency UNICEF has donated motorbikes to the government to help health officials reach remote villages. It says the outbreak has already changed the lives of thousands of children. With an average of five children orphaned with each city's parents due to Ebola, you can imagine that there are thousands of children who are made vulnerable by this epidemic. Efforts to develop a vaccine are underway. Clinical trials in the U.S. are likely to start next week, in the U.K. next month. Vaccine development and testing usually takes up to 10 years. Drug company GlaxoSmithKline says it hopes to finish the first phase of clinical trials by the end of 2014. The experimental vaccine has already been tested successfully on chimpanzees, which are known to also catch Ebola. And both elements of the test vaccine, the chimpanzee flu virus and two proteins from the Ebola virus, have been shown to be safe in humans. But a study just published in the journal Science suggests the Ebola virus in West Africa is mutating fast and this could blunt the effectiveness of diagnostic tests and experimental vaccines. From long experience with developing vaccines, you've got to be careful when you first put it into humans to make sure, above all, that it's safe, that there are no unexpected adverse reactions. And that's the reason why you go in very slowly with very few people and you follow them carefully. With the number of new cases in Guinea, Sierra Leone and Liberia last week at their highest so far, the WHO has warned that it could take months, even years, to bring the outbreak under control. Tarek Basley, Al Jazeera. Dr. Rossi Hassad is a member of the American College of Epidemiology and he joins us now from New York. I want to talk about this uh, drug ZMAP which is being used. Uh, it's 100% effective, said to be 100% effective on the monkeys it's been tried on, but two out of the seven humans it's been given to have died. Should we be administering it as, we, uh, as it's currently being done? I think we have to be careful here that even though we have had two Americans and two others who have recovered or are recovering, we can't attribute their recovery to any particular treatment or intervention. It seems to me, and from evidence we are looking at, that ZMAP has contributed, but without baseline information and controlled studies, that cannot be conclusive. If we look at the two patients who have died, not everyone who receives a treatment is often a good candidate for recovery. It depends on the stage at which that treatment is received and other uh, patient factors that can contribute to their prognosis. Now, the first known case of Ebola emerged about, or 
was recorded about 40 years ago. Why are we still in the experimental phase of finding a drug for it? This is troubling, and um, I think it has large, largely to do with not rec recognizing the risk and importance associated with this virus. And that could largely be one of economics. That being that it, there wasn't a large enough economic incentive to move along research and pharmaceutical production in this area. The numbers of people affected over the past uh, 40 outbreaks have been, um, 20 outbreaks, I should say, have been relatively low. And Ebola infection is sporadic, which means that the number of people who would require treatment would be relatively low. I'm hoping that this outbreak would spell greater concern and we will see more governments becoming interested in at least stockpiling a potential treatment and therefore contributing to research and development of vaccines and treatment. Now my colleague in the report just before we came to you was talking about how this is a rapidly mutating virus. Can you tell me how it complicates things now that we're seeing this is quite a uh, large spread of it across uh, the African continent? That's of extreme concern. And I think a watershed moment in responding to this outbreak. We, we are repeating history here in terms of seeing the exact uh, uh, dynamics with the HIV, that's the AIDS virus. Mutation means it's constantly changing. And it could also mean that we have missed many cases, meaning that the diagnostic procedures we are using are not sensitive and specific enough to identify the virus as it changes. It also means that we have to have a multi-pronged, multifaceted approach to developing treatments so that we can respond to it as it changes. So there are two main areas here. The diagnostic testing, so that we have a test that can respond to the virus as it changes, and treatment to meet those needs. And whatever happens has to happen quickly, I assume. Thank you very much, Dr. Rossi Assad. Absolutely. Good to speak to you. Thank you.